Uh, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about WebRTC in a doctor's office and some cool stuff we've done with IBM Watson. Who's heard of IBM Watson? The thing that kicked Jeopardy's ass. Um, sorry, I, I have a baby on the way and I need to stop cussing. But uh, <laughs> So uh, we're going to be talking about um, a real live use of WebRTC in something that actually really matters. Um, there is a uh, client in uh, Houston, Texas that we we're working with that tries to uh, help people with cancer all over the state of Texas. And uh, they had issues with people driving six hours to the hospital to come see some of the best doctors in the world. So they asked to help for, for us to develop an iPad app for their doctors where they could video chat with uh, their patients and do remote teleconsults. It really saved those patients some time. So uh, Chris is going to be my, my wonderful doctor today. Um, and we're going to go through a little quick demo. So this is a so the iPad. We're going to go through an iPad app that also has uh, Twilio's WebRTC running on it, their their video chat framework, and also a Bluemix app that has um, it's just a, a Node app running in the browser that we're going to use to interact with it. Yes, it is that. So I'm going to ask Chris to open up, <laughs> open up the app and uh, be be the doctor for me really quick. Sorry, we can't show it up here on the screen, anyways. So it's, it, this is the, the app the doctor would see every day. They can see some of their upcoming patients, and then they can see some of the, their vital information about the patient and see some, uh, some CT scan stuff like that, regular doctor stuff. So let's say I actually wanted to video chat with uh, my doctor today. So Chris, the doctor, okay. could go online and, pr and do doing, office hours doing, with what me. What insurance do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Not good enough for you. Okay. <laughs> so he would click the little video icon to do a little video chat with me top, in the top right. There's a little... Okay. And I'm going to video chat with them as, as well. So I'm okay. going to so be Dr. Jenner. Jenner. We'll get Justin here. Does Justin is here. Dr. So Dr. earlier <laughs> we also saw this wonderful user experience with uh, WebRTC. So I, I got asked to use my um, microphone and, and camera. Okay. So in a second, it's going to come up, hopefully, on the screen if the Wi-Fi cooperates. Uh, come on. Oh, here we go. Cool. Okay. So the cool thing here is, if you notice at the bottom of the screen, it's actually typing what I'm trying to say. Let me get closer to the computer and try to talk. Hello, uh, Chris. How are you doing today? I would like to talk about the, the cancer treatment we have been working I on. I turned the volume down. OK, can you hear me through that? OK, the transcription really wasn't that good right there. With um, It works really well with a microphone, but it's actually not too bad. What's going on here is, Watson is transcribing this text in real time, and then we're going to go through all the fun, nerdy stuff. I'm ready to nerd out. Who else is ready to nerd out to see how this works? Yeah, so actually, you just pointed out, Serge, you pointed out a really cool point. So Watson will autocorrect text on the fly. It'll try to figure out uh, what you're saying, the context of what you're saying it, and try to correct it on the fly. So uh, really quick demo. Um, let's go through how some of this stuff actually works now. Let's go back to the keynote. I guess I should have had this up here earlier, but uh, my name is Jeff Sawyer. I'm a developer advocate for something that IBM has called Bluemix. Uh, we're going to go through what Bluemix is really, really quickly, and then we're going to nerd out. So what is Bluemix? It's basically a platform as a service that's built on Cloud Foundry. Who, who's ever heard of Cloud Foundry? It's really awesome. Um, so there's also Docker and VMs, and basically think of it as your one-stop shop for a developer for everything you need from a database to using cool things like Watson, running your favorite programming language for a web app, auto scale on your web app. You can run Go, you can run Node, whatever you want, you can run. So that's really what Bluemix is. And that app we saw earlier, that was a Node app running, because I really like Node. So let's go through the, the flow of how this kind of works. So um, in the beginning, uh, the, the, the patient would uh, click to call the doctor, what I did in my web browser. The next um, in initiates a WebRTC, WebRTC call to Twilio. And then the doctor also initiates a call from, uh, their, from his iOS device to Twilio as well. So we got a call established. Great. Basic WebRTC stuff. Nothing that crazy there. So this is where it starts getting cool. So as they're chatting, um, the dialogue's going on. The, uh, the audio stream is streamed from uh, the web browser to uh, a node backend over WebSockets. And then it's streamed to the node backend in where it's running in Bluemix. That audio is taken from uh, the node backend and sent over a REST API to IBM Watson. So what does Watson do with it? It actually takes the text and transcribes it from 
the voice stream into uh, text. And as Serge pointed out, great point. It'll tr try to figure out the context of what you're talking about. It'll go back and try to correct itself. It's kind of cool. So we'll transcribe the audio in real time. Real time is the key, the key point here. And we just like storing the, 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 the transcribed audio just for fun. And then lastly, we didn't go over this in the little quick demo on the iPad app, but um, the, the doctors also wanted a way, a fun, cool way of seeing the, the, the mental psyche of their patient, how they're dealing with their cancer treatment. So there's another really cool service Watson has that basically will, you give it a bunch of text, it'll tell you the personality of the author. So if they're like upbeat, sad, there's a whole bunch of personality traits I don't understand. I'm not a psychologist, so I don't understand a lot of them. But we picked out a couple that you can kind of see the mental psyche of how a patient was feeling about the cancer treatment. Pretty cool. And the last step, uh, sends the transcribed audio back to um, the doctor in real time over WebSockets as well, as well, all in real time. So uh, we're going to go through a couple points on how this works. So the first part is the, the, the WebSockets piece with WebRTC, how that works. And then lastly, uh, the transcription with Watson and how that works as well. So um, <laughs> I love this picture. Um, it, it with, with Twilio's uh, iOS SDK and the JavaScript SDK, it made this really, really easy, combined with uh, a, an app in Bluemix, it made this incredibly, incredibly easy to do this. And I did this all in three days. Um, it was for Twilio's conference earlier this year and made this in three days underneath the knife. A lot of pressure and got it done in three days. And the point I'm trying to make here is this WebRTC and using Bluemix together, incredibly, incredibly simple. It makes your life as a dev so much easier. So let's get into the code. I promised you code. Let's, let's really nerd out now. So um, I'm going to go through some of this. So um, this might be, I don't know how familiar everyone is with some of the, the audio streams and WebRTC. So basically what we're doing is trying to grab the, the media stream. Um, let's see if this laser pointer thing works. Grab the media stream from the, the local audio in the, in the web browser. Grab that media stream, uh, connect it to... Um, an audio processor, basically what that does, we'll go through that in a second. Remember this on audio process function here? We're gonna see that in a second, what that does. And it's basically tying the, the media stream um, to, to, to um, a function that allow you to do basically anything you want with the audio. You can spy on it, you can change it all around, you can do whatever you want. It's pretty cool. And a lot of this stuff is really not documented well. We're gonna get some lessons learned later, but a lot of this stuff is not documented too well on the, on the web. So um, the cool part with, uh, with this is really the, the, the WebSockets piece, um, streaming um, the audio in real time to, to, our, to IBM Watson so we can get that transcription and the doctor can see what the patient's saying in real time. So the big, what, basically what it's saying here is opening a, a WebSocket connection uh, to our node backend. Then down at the bottom, I should have had line numbers on this. This, mess, this function show a result. We're going to come to that in a second again. But that basically, um, anytime there is a new chunk of audio that comes through, a new me uh, message gets sent over WebSockets, a new message em is emitted over WebSockets to our backend that has uh, the audio. So promise to uh, you this on audio process function. This is really the guts and the meat of everything, how this works. Basically what this is saying is um, we're going to grab the, just the data that's coming off of the audio stream, ones and zeros, um, and then convert it, actually, this is the dirty trick, convert it into PCM16, Whoever, who, who knows what PCM16 is? If there's an audio file in the room, you'll know what it is. Um, PCM16, it's a high fidelity audio format, um, that's all it really is, but Watson wants the audio in this specific format. I don't know why, but it just does. Um, so I did not put a function up on the screen, it's called export data buffer here on the screen. It is a dirty, 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 um, function that converts uh, a WebRTC audio stream, whatever the, the, the whatever it formats it's in, to PCM16. Pain in the butt. Um, it was not fun figuring it out. That was a lot of guessing and checking. So this function, uh, we, this is what, after we get that all transcribed, after we could get it converted into PCM16, we want to send it to our, um, our node backend. And this is traditional socket, WebSocket code. It's just emitting a message with our, our audio uh, to the backend. So I know this is a really long slide. I'm going to try to go through it. There's a lot going on here. Um, the first maybe 10 lines is just saying uh, when a, a WebSocket message comes in, uh, it's just going to create a little JSON object to send to Watson. Um, it's just constructing that. So remember that PCM16, that's where it comes up again right there. 
and all this other stuff is just needed for Watts, and so it knows how to do it. The most important line, really, really simple, and this is a node. Um, there's an NPM package for Watson, which is really, really awesome. This, uh, this method recognizes live. It's an absolutely really, really cool method. So you give it a JSON object and a function to call back once Watson transcribes the text, and you can get your, your data in and out of Watson in real time over WebSockets. Really cool. And then what we're saying here, the line below it, is um, we're going to wait for results to come back, observe res result. Once it comes back from Watson, we're going to wa wait for it to do something. And then at the very bottom, where is, we send it back to the back end. So uh, let's go into this observe, result mess observe results. It's really, really cool how this works. So um, what this is saying, I'm just going to highlight one line here that's really kind of cool. So when Serge noticed this earlier, Watson was renaming some of the, the audio context, what was being talked about. Uh, Watson gives a best guess of when you're done talking about something. It'll, it'll, it'll try to figure out when you're t done talking about a sentence. And that's really, really cool in the fact that it, well, you can see what it's doing, and then you can go back and watch it go back and show you something different. So one last little uh, little code piece. This is uh, this JavaScript on the client side. This was the cool thing that was showing the the uh, the, um, the audio in the web browser. And what this is saying is this the dirt. I'm sorry, this is really dirty code. <laughs> but uh, basically, what this is saying is trying to figure out a sentence structure. Uh, for when you're talking. So it shows periods and breaks in it, and it'll go back and replace text as Watson figures out the text that you're talking about. And um, we're going to go through some lessons learned with WebRTC, uh, especially with Twilio and, and doing this in Bluemix. Um, so order for starting a call it, it can be quite buggy, at least in my experience with, with, with this. Um, for the app that we did, when I made Chris actually hit the button first to start the call as a doctor. Uh, for for some unknown reason, uh, if the call was started first by the the, the patient, the, the client, it would not work. Uh, so that was a pain in the butt to figure that out. Um, there is lots of issues with WebRTC and Chrome and Firefox. Um, leading up to when I did this demo at Twilio, uh, Firefox just came out with a new version. It was like Firefox 38. Sorry if there's anyone here from Firefox. I'm hating on you right now a little bit. Fire. Okay, <laughs> sorry. A new version of Firefox came out. It was like Firefox 38.02 or 01 or something like that, and it broke WebRTC uh, for remote audio. Uh, I was talking on the phone with uh, Rob from Twilio, and it was like, we're going to cancel this demo because this shit just doesn't work. But eventually found a, an older version of Firefox, Fire 30, Firefox 35 that worked. So to give Chrome some hate also, um, you cannot spy on the remote audio. Uh, I don't know if it's fixed yet in Chrome yet. You cannot f spy on the remote audio from a remote participant in Web WebRTC right now. There's an open bug about it. I don't know if it's been fixed yet. That was a fun one to work through also. Thank you. It has not been fixed. OK. So uh, you, yeah, you have to use Firefox 35, really. It's the, the best for this right now. So uh, multiple WebSocket streams are really, really hard. Um, I was trying to set up this demo where the transcribed audio from the doctor and the patient, you get both of them at the same time. If you've ever tried doing that in Node or JavaScript on the client side, it's not fun. It's one of the most complicated things in the world to do. If you've done it, I would love to see your code because I hated my life trying to figure it out. Um, getting the audio format was right. Um, the API docs for Watson never really <laughs> mentioned uh, you needed the audio on PCM16. Um, since this demo, uh, it's been fixed. Uh, the documentation says you need PCM16, but that was a pain about doing that. And then converting the audio in the browser on the fly uh, to PCM16 was not fun. That was incredibly, incredibly complicated. I eventually found some algorithm that kind of did it, and it's over my head. Yes. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Another Watson service, so convert audio from XYZ to PCM16. Like it. So uh, personality of the patient. So this was what I was talking about, the doctor trying to figure out um, whether or not their patient's upbeat about their cancer treatment or not. So uh, in the demo, it was uh, the personality, we could not figure it out until the call was over because we were waiting for the whole chunk of text from the whole transcri transcription to be there. Could have been cooler and smart about and, and sent it over. I'd done a bunch of rest calls as the call was going on. You could see the, the, you could see the um, personality of the patient changing as the text is going through. That would be kind of cool, but just didn't do it. It just was too much work. Scaling WebSockets, um, it's not fun. Um, I mean, you can do it with like Redis and stuff and, and really make it scalable, but 
There's also issues like how do you deal with uh, the results coming back from Watson and knowing which WebSockets session to stick it on to send back to the client. WebSockets scaling is not fun with that type of situation. Um, spy on the media stream, this was, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, it's not well documented at all with WebRTC really on how to do some of these piping with the, audio, the streams and the context and stuff. That was really kind of complicated. Um, eventually like cobbled together something from Mozilla's um, documentation and some other sites kind of found some things that kind of worked. Oh, the, a lot of these things were not really well documented. It was kind of really kind of a bummer. Uh, lastly, uh, the, the WebSockets to Watson dropped a lot for some reason. Um, I don't know why, but um, I don't, it could have been, I don't know what it was, but eventually wrote some retried logic in there to reopen the, the WebSocket connection, which made my life a little easier. Uh, and then this is my wonder, I couldn't have a presentation without a cat in it. Uh, any questions? I didn't have a unicorn, but there is a cat. <laughs> no, it's a stuffed animal. <laughs> yeah, right up here in the front. There's an organization, I uh, can't remember the name, but they're using software to characterize the style of callers. And on the s a second call from that caller, they feed them to reps that are specifically good at handling that style. Are you aware of that? And have you considered building something like that in? Uh, I've heard of something like that. Um, I forgot the name of the company that was doing that, but um, uh, there's another uh, API in Bluemix that you can use. It's by a company called Alchemy API, a really cool company that IBM bought. You can actually determine the sentiment, and uh, you can pull out keywords of their talk. So you could use do something like that route, if take the sentiment of the conversation, see if they're really pissed off or happy, and then use that for rallying them to the right um, type of agent, the the level two agent, the level three agent, whatever you want to say. And I think those guys were in Chicago. If that helps anything. Yeah, that would be that would be really fun. Next step, M more homework. <laughs> First, is it live yet? Yes, uh, this is live. All this was running live on the internet. Um, there was actually, a, the website was twilio-video.mybluemix.net. That's, that's, you could actually run the whole demo from there. Um, if you go to slash provider, you can fake yourself as a doctor. You don't have to have the iPad app, but yeah. It's all live on the internet. And uh, the patient can be on the mobile app as well, or is it No, only so just the, the patient can only be in the web browser. And so the only reason we did that was uh, Twilio wanted us to highlight uh, iOS to to web browser. Um, I mean, just uh, I mean, maybe from use case perspective, when somebody is really in trouble, they would have their phone handy, then opening up their laptop and connecting with the doctor and all of that. So, no, that's great feedback. Actually, funny you mentioned that um, that iPad app we that we was up here. The doctors actually hated it. Uh, they want it on their phone now because the iPad was too big. They don't like sticking it in their scrubs. It's too big for them. <laughs> Thanks. One more, just from okay. the back here. Uh, WebRTC for uh, medical and HIPAA compliance. Um, so which pieces are already handled by WebRTC? Which pieces do you need, do we need as third party developers to worry about? Can you repeat the question a little louder, sorry. Um, WebRTC for medical and HIPAA compliance. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I'll defer to that. Uh, at least on the, the video the, the video part to Twilio, I'll, I'll let Rob or, or, or someone answer that later. But um, for everything that was running in Bluemix, everything else, that was uh, the data was encrypted at rest. Bluemix is HIPAA compliant, so it's fine with that. Um, we actually spent a lot of time with this client going through um, how their application can be secure and they don't get sued. And yeah, it, we spent a lot of time with that. <laughs> 